many blessed today? How many of you know that because God's hand is on your life, the enemy can't stop you from being blessed? How many have got at least one reason to give God a shout of praise this morning? Hallelujah. Now let me hear that shout real quick. Let me hear that shout. Ha, glory, glory, glory. Y'all know this song? I want to sing this song before I preach. And I just love it. You know, when I ride in the car and listen to it, it makes me feel like I'm almost in heaven. The song says, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Y'all know that? O oh, my soul. Come on. Worship. Come on, say it. Sing like never before. Sing. Oh my. Worship. Worship your holy name. Come on, wave your hand and say, say, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Come on. Oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Sing. Oh my soul, worship, worship your holy name. Come on, just wave your hands and think about his goodness for just a moment. Just one moment. Come on, just bask in his presence. Just think of his goodness. Think of his kindness. Sundays are for church, but every day is for worship. And we've come together in this house, believing God, not just for what he's already done and thanking him for what he's already done. My God, but I got, I've got something just on the inside where I just say, man, I need to praise God for some stuff that hasn't even happened yet. Some things that are coming. There's some things that are on the way. A breakthrough that's on the way. Something getting ready to change in your family. A shift getting ready to happen in your finances. Some people that you've been praying to get saved, getting ready to give that life to Jesus. Something good is getting ready to happen. Something good is getting ready to happen. Something marvelous is about to happen. If you believe it, shout yeah. Come on, say yeah. Come on, one more time. Let's sing it together. Bless the Lord on my soul. Come on. Everybody say, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord on oh, my soul. Come on. Oh, my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never. Come on. Sing like never before. Oh, oh, my soul. Woo. Worship his holy name come on one more time exercise wave those hands bless the lord come on oh, oh my soul worship worship i can't sing it like you but i'll say it sing like now oh my soul worship his holy name Come on, say it again. Say, worship his holy name. Worship his holy name. Mm -hmm. Worship. Worship his holy name. You've been praying for a miracle and it's coming. Come on, worship. Worship his holy name. You've been believing God for healing and it's coming. Come on. Come on, God is turning things around right now to worship, worship. He's canceling every plan of the enemy against your life. Worship his holy name. I don't know who this is for, but the promotion is yours. Come on, worship his holy name. Come on, last time say worship, worship. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to lie. Normally, when you say clap your hands and praise God, people just clap and sit down. But there's something different happening up in here. When y'all start clapping, I just feel chains coming loose. Come on. Come on, when y'all start clapping, I felt somebody's body getting healed. Somebody say, oh! I feel glory. I feel glory. I feel glory. Hallelujah. I'm going to do something real fast. Pastor Mike, come up. Don't y'all sit down yet. 
Some of y'all said that you were going to work out more in 2018. You ain't been to the gym yet. So let's work out today. All right? I want to do something real quick. All right? This is just something I just want to do. All right? Um, Pastor Michael, like he said, man, we became friends a couple of years back. And he wrote me an email. And that was back when I was, like, answering all my own stuff. And I still do. You know, I still look at it. And then, you know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, answer that. So, and then somebody else called back so I can seem more important. Yeah, right, right. But uh, when he called me, I said, man, I want to get right there, man. You know, I didn't know, I didn't even know about Central Triad Church. And I went to Winston-Salem State and got graduated. I didn't even know. I was like, man, had I known y'all were here all this time, I'd have been here. And that at other places getting jacked up. Anyway, oh, that, this life? Yeah. Oh, oh. But anyway. Pastor Michael's a good friend of mine. And you know what I want to do? We have a great following. Uh, since I've been here, I think the first time I came, I was single or engaged. Right. Then the second time I came, I was actually married. Right. And now I'm here and I'm have a baby girl in about seven days. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and the best part about it, when she meets her Uncle Michael, she won't be able to tell who's who. That's right. <laughs> good looking guys. That's right. We yeah. look so much alike. Yeah. <laughs> but also on top of that, our ministry has grown. I think like social media was doing good back then. I had like maybe a million people. And now we're at like two million people on Facebook. And I'm on, uh, we got our own program on the Word Network now. And every Saturday night, and we're getting ready to hit TBN and Come on. Uh, TBN Salsa. And uh, uh, we're, we're getting airtime on NBC to cover South Carolina because I live in Myrtle Beach now. So I'm closer. All right. And yeah. so, so many great things are happening. And, 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 and it's because you have the prayers and support of your friends. How many understand that God's going to put people in your life that are going to bless you and not burden you? And Pastor Mike is not a burden. Central Tri is one of my favorite places to be, man. Believe me. I love this place. And Lord, have mercy. The changes. I mean, just good God. <laughs> and the fact that y'all have embraced it, it does a friend it does my heart glad because some pastors got such big vision to change. Man, there's some people that are just stiff neck. They don't want to change. Don't want to do nothing but stay in the same spot and then be yeah. mad at other people that's growing. CTC, y'all have no other choice but to keep growing because you're open to let God do new and greater things. That's right. And so what I'm going to do, I think we're on Facebook Live. We're on Facebook Live right now. Yeah. But I want to do this, and this is going to be like something we're going to cut up, and we'll use it and just post it. But can I just like promote y'all church real quick? They didn't sound excited. Yes. <laughs> All right, so let's switch sides because this is my good side. Okay. I got acne on that side. All right, so you ready? Which camera is number one? Now, this is what I want y'all to do. I want you to start and I want y'all to be screaming. It's clapping, woo! And every time I say something that you agree with, cheer, okay? And the camera's gonna go around and show y'all and stuff. Y'all ready? Now, I only do this at churches where the people look blessed. There we go. There it is. Hey, my friends. God bless you. Pastor Mark is here. I'm so excited that you hit that play button to hear this video because I want to tell you about an awesome church, an awesome man of God. I'm talking about Central Triad Church yeah. in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Pastor Michael Kelly is with me. Now listen, this is my brother in the Lord. And I'm telling you, I know y'all are watching me from all over the world, but y'all are not strangers to North Carolina. That's right. You're not strangers to church. And so listen, if you live in North Carolina, or if you're ever visiting North Carolina, I want you to make your way to 2935 Cole, Cole Road, Road. That's right. On a Sunday morning, 9 a.m. and 1045 a.m. That's right. When you come to this church, you're going to be greeted with love. You're going to enjoy the fellowship. The praise and worship is just second to none. But most importantly, the word of God is being preached and your life is guaranteed to be changed forever. And most importantly, you will not leave the way you came in Jesus' name. Pastor Michael, tell them, tell them something about your church. This is your day to have what's been binding you loose from your body and the presence of God bound to you. It's life changing, you'll never be the same. This is your time of deliverance. This is your day. Hey. So, so, listen, 
I want you, if you got family members in North Carolina, share this video with them. Let them know. They're looking for a church. Get to CTC, Central Triad Church. This is the place to be in Winston-Salem. Get here, and I promise you'll be blessed. Amen. Hey, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all can sit up. I've got a feeling everything's gonna be alright. Oh, I got a feeling. Come on, everything's gonna be alright. Oh, I got a feeling everything's gonna be alright. Be all right, be all right, be all right. Come on, do it, come on, son. Oh, I got a feeling, come on. Everything's gonna be all right. Oh, I got a feeling. Everything's gonna be all right. Come on, say, I got a feeling, come on. Everything's gonna be all right, come on. Be all right, be all right, be all right. Everything's gonna be all right. Oh, 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 come on! Everything's gonna be all right. Say it again. Everything's gonna be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Now, come on! If you believe it, hop one time. Come on, hop! Dance a little bit, dance a little bit, like you believe in God for something. Hey, hey, all right, 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 all right. Jesus, 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 yeah, yeah. I just got a little happy. I, I just got a little happy. H how many, how many of you believe in God for just anything? Like that? I just something. If you know what's on the way, I want you to do me a favor, just to let me know I'm in the right house. Jump up on your feet and just shout, I already got it. Yeah! Come on! Hey! Come on! Dance with somebody. I had to dance with somebody. Oh, glory, glory. Woo. Okay. All right, y'all stop. Y'all, y'all got me acting crazy. Y'all got me acting crazy. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus, this ain't the nine o'clock. We got some time to have church. We got time to have church. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm getting ready to dance. They're telling them, say, I'm not dancing for me. Tell them, say, this dance is for your blessing. Now go ahead and dance for them. Go ahead and dance for your neighbor. Ho! Hey! Dance for your neighbor's blessing. Woo! I'm trying to get to my message y'all but he said it's going down I had to hashtag it's going down so just let it go on down hallelujah glory 
Glory, glory, glory. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. I heard somebody said in the scripture, I'll bless the Lord at all times. Some of y'all praising God and you've been going through hell all week. And you praising him in the middle of a storm. Lord told me to tell you, your praise is the key that's getting ready to unlock the door. Watch this here. Not just to new levels, but to new places. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Mm, 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 mm. Lift your hands up high all over this place. Just lift your hands. Don't clap. Just lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands. Mm, 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 mm. Lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands. I want to get into the word. I, I am. But. Father, thank you right now for this moment. Thank you for this time that you've given us in this place. Father, your presence is everywhere we go, but God, your Shekinah glory is in this room right now. God, I can feel it. Father, thank you. Thank you, God, for placing us in this position. Father, there's some that will, that will refuse your presence, but God, we, we agree with it, Lord. Because we agree with you, God, we know that change is coming. Miracles are coming. Shifts are happening everywhere. I thank you that this service will not just be routine, but Father, this is the first step towards something amazing happening in the next seven days of our life. This is the prerequisite. This is an early celebration for a victory. It's getting ready to happen in somebody's life in this room. Thank you for your word. That every ear will hear, every mind will understand, and every heart will receive it. And thank you, Father, even for those that are watching online from all around the world. I pray for them right now. That God, your spirit and your anointing will take over their household, wherever they may be. As we feel your presence here, God, let your anointing meet them right where they are. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And we all said together, amen, amen, amen. amen. and amen. Please be seated. Please. You crazy people. You radical people. Anybody have a birthday today? Is it anybody's birthday today? Anybody's birthday today? Raise your hand high if you have a birthday today. Man, I should have been in that line getting me a certificate to join this church, man. I'm telling you. I just... Anybody have a... a matter of fact, let me ask this. Who's a freshman in college? Right there. Your hand went up first. Come on and get this book. I try to give away a book every time I go somewhere. And uh, it's called Under Construction and OK, Seven Keys to Growing Through Your Journey with Confidence. I wrote this book last year, and I uh, gave one away in the first service, and this one's for you. Read it and be blessed by it, all right? OK. Go with me to the, to the Word of God. Man, I, my legs hurt now. I was, I mean, I've been going to some dead churches lately, you know? When you come to a church that's not dead, you exercise and you feel stuff and you start doing things that you're going to pay for on the plane tonight, you know. I love y'all. Y'all are amazing. I got a word for you, okay? I want to bless you real good. I'm so thankful to be here again. And uh, we're looking forward to the, 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 the greater that's coming to this place continually. Amen? Amen? Mark chapter number 10, verse 46. Mark chapter number 10, verse 46. 
Mark chapter number 10, verse 46, and we're going to read verses 46 through 52. Now, I'm going to read it to you first from the King James Version, and then I'm going to read it uh, from another version, okay? Mark chapter number 10, verse 46 through 52. If you're ready for the word, say, I'm ready. ready. Say, hey. Hey. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready. Here it is. And this is what the word of the Lord says uh, in the word. It says, verse number 46, "Uh, now they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude. Then blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So when Jesus stood, oh, excuse me, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And then they called the blind man, saying to him, be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said unto him, what is it that you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabbi, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Now from the English version, the contemporary English version, it reads it like this. Jesus and his disciples went to Jericho, and as they were leaving, they were followed by a large crowd. Now Jesus was extremely popular. If Jesus lived today, he would have the most Instagram followers. He had the largest Facebook following. His tweets would be retweeted over and over and over again while being persecuted but yet celebrated because people would want to be connected with him because of who he was. There was a large crowd following. Then a blind beggar by the name of Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road. And when he heard that it was Jesus from Nazareth, he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. Many people told the man to stop because he shouted so loud, but because of that, he decided to shout even louder. Son of David, have pity on me. So I can just imagine him shouting, Son of David, Jesus, help! People around him saying, hey man, hush, chill out, be quiet. But then he said, oh Jesus, help! Many people told the man to stop, but he shouted even louder. Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him over. They called out the blind man and said, don't be afraid. Come on. He is calling for you. The man threw off his coat as he jumped up and ran to Jesus. Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man answered, master, I want to see. Jesus told him, you may go. Your eyes are healed because of your faith. Right away, the man could see. And he went down the road with Jesus. I want to title this message to you today, and I want you to hear me loud and clear. Seven insights from a blind man. Seven insights from a blind man. Let me make this announcement, and maybe 30 of you agree with me. If not, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I am so glad that I am not perfect. I'm glad about it. I'm excited about the fact that I'm not perfect. You know, it's been said that a person who thinks that they're perfect or a person who thinks that they know everything is indeed the dumbest person on earth. How many of y'all agree with me? How many of y'all know some people that just act like they know everything? Stop looking around. You looked at somebody too fast when I said that. You weren't supposed to, you know, agree and then find them. No, 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 no. It was just a question. A person that thinks they know everything and a person that thinks that they make no mistake and a person that thinks they got it all together is indeed a person that I never want to be connected to because the only person that I know to come and live a perfect life, his name was Jesus. And what makes us so amazing is how God loves us all so much that even in our imperfections, he can do perfect things through imperfect people. How many imperfect people is God using to do some perfect things? Come on, somebody. The word of the Lord tells us in the book of Psalm, mark the perfect man and behold the upright. That text there wasn't talking about Jesus. It was talking about you and I because he lives on the inside. 
I'm glad that I'm not perfect. I'm glad that I don't dot every I and cross every T. Because if I was, I'd be insane. In fact, I heard one great man of God tell me, he said, Marcus, the most dangerous person to be connected to is a person who is dead wrong, but they think they're right. Anybody know some people like that? Look straight. Look at me. Look right at me if you're going to respond. And one thing that I love about life is that God uses people who might not look like they can be used to actually do great things. I remember when I was in New Haven, Connecticut, I had started a church there. And uh, that church is now closed because, you know, God definitely revealed to me that, you know, there's certain things that he called me to do outside of being a local pastor. But a part of our ministry, every Saturday, we went to this place called the New Haven Green. If anybody in here is familiar with the city of New Haven or Yale University, the New Haven Green is a beautiful park there in the city of New Haven. But uh, there's a corner of that park where the homeless population rests all day, all night. And so what we would do on Saturdays before Sunday service, we would gather at the New Haven Green. We'd put on our T-shirts, and uh, the church name and logo was on there. And you know what? I was a little proud, you know, because I had started a church. And, you know, I said, I had the name of the church. And then on the bottom it said, Marcus Gill, lead pastor. You know, and I felt good. I said, I got a church, man. I'm a pastor. We're out here walking. We had like 30 people, man. And we're walking the park, man. And we're going up to folks. Watch this here. That we think are less fortunate and think, we, you know, looking like they need prayer. And I'm in my mind thinking, yeah, we need to go minister to them. They need prayer. And then we're going to help them. We're going to take food. We're going to take clothes. And that's a good thing to do. I heard you guys are doing the same thing. It's a good thing to do. But in my mind, I'm like, I'm the preacher out here. I've got the message. I've got the anointing. And we would pray for people and people be crying. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, Lord, I'm anointed. It was even one time this guy was drunk and, and he said, I, I, I need prayer. I need prayer. And, and Deacon Amos will tell you, I laid hands on that brother. He fell out in the park, like in the grass. I really thought I was anointed because I said, this only happens in church. And this guy fell out in the grass. But when he got up, the man was completely sober. He stood up and was saying, thank you, Jesus, clear, no slur, gave his life to the Lord and came and joined our fellowship. It was amazing. So I felt in my heart, I'm like, man, I got the message. I got the message until one Saturday we went and I went up to this man thinking that because of how he looked or because of the position that he was in, almost like this man, he was on the roadside, just kind of in his garments and whatever he had, he had, had a little uh, a shopping cart full of garbage bags and bottles and I said, oh, he really needs a word from me. And I'm thinking, I got this and we're going to walk up to him and then we're going to speak to him. And when I said to him, I said, my brother, how are you today? And that's all I needed to say. Let's just make a long story short. In five minutes, I was the one crying, asking God to help me. Because this man... I'll never forget his name. His name was Dunamis. I can't forget that name because we know that that means power. His name was Dunamis. And, and, and he told me, he said, I said, how are you doing today, sir? And I'm thinking that's my little intro to witness and get somebody saved, right? And he starts telling me, he said, I'm good. I've got the joy of the Lord. And he said, you need to get your joy back. So I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, I, got, I got joy, my brother. Said, you know, tell me, tell me, how, how's life going for you? You know, what are you, what are you working on? What, what are your dreams? What, what are you praying for? He said, I'm not praying for nothing. I've got everything I need. I'm like, okay, God, uh, I don't know how to respond to this kind of stuff. Like, what do I do? And he starts telling me, he said, young man, you're out here doing what you're doing. I'm so proud of you. And he said, but you know what? I probably got more joy than you. He said, I may be out here and I'm homeless. He said, I, I don't have a home. I don't have family. He said, but one thing I have, he said, I have life. He said, and I'm at peace with where I am. You wouldn't be at peace out here. He said, I'm at peace with where I am. He said, he said, he said, I lost my mother. I lost my father. He said, my brothers and sisters, they're locked away. And I had one uh, sibling that passed away. He said, my children won't even talk to me. He said, but yet I can still sit here and look at you and tell you that I have joy. This man was saying it with a smile. He, he didn't cry. He wasn't frustrated. He said it with a smile. He started quoting Psalm 34. He said, I believe in blessing the Lord at all times and letting his praise continue to be in my mouth. He started telling me, he said, greater is he who's in me than he that is in this world. And he told me, he said, if God changes my situation or if he doesn't, he said, I'm fine because I'm a child of God. And I know that I'm blessed. I don't look blessed. I don't have what you have. He said, but I'm blessed. I, at the end of that moment, my team members will tell you, I was the one sitting there like, oh, God, I need you. What is the moral here? I learned a lesson. 
from somebody who looked like they couldn't tell me nothing. Here's my question to you real quick. How many people are you overlooking that could possibly be carrying your miracle, but you overlook them because they don't look like what you prayed for? Let me give you this. You may be the person that somebody's overlooking right now because you might not look to them like what they're praying for. But I, I, I heard somebody tell me the other day, they said, you're getting ready to go from a season of being overlooked to overbooked. <laughs> Watch this here. You may not look the part, but listen, you got to understand that when God is going to use you or when God is going to use somebody else, it doesn't matter what garments you have on. See, there's this department store thing that I have. I want to share it with you and see if you catch it. Don't be a department store type Christian. Y'all like, what that mean? We go shopping and we'll, bo- we'll buy Ralph Lauren and wear Ralph Lauren, but we've never met Ralph Lauren. Y'all going to catch that in 30 seconds. We look like Ralph, but we don't know Ralph. Do you know how many people in the church look like Jesus or trying to look like him, but ain't never met him? So it doesn't matter what you look like on the outside or what your situation is. One thing that blind Bartimaeus teaches us in this text is that disability doesn't mean inability. And in the text, we look here, and Jesus is passing by. He's coming through, and there the word says, a blind man named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, is standing on the road, sitting by the roadside, and he's begging. He doesn't look like somebody great. It's quite obvious. The Bible specifically says he was not in the crowd with Jesus, so we right away, we know that he's not already associated with Jesus, but he's on the roadside. So there in the text, my vision says if one is on the side, the writer's trying to let us know that he was someone who was possibly disregarded. He was pushed away. He was pushed to the side. Let's move him because he's not like us. He's, he can't see. He's got an issue. He, he, he's, he's not functioning fully. Let's push him to the side while everybody else passes by. And the Bible says that Bartimaeus did something so powerful. He began to cry out. Seven insights from a blind man. Let me get you this. Number one. All right? Number one. I want you to get this here. Number one. If you were looking for a miracle... You might not be in the same situation as Bartimaeus today, but you've got something in your life that has caused you to miss God, or caused you to miss where you should be. And there's no bad thing. I look back on my life sometime and I say, man, I should be a lot further along now, but that's okay. The Bible tells us that God will restore and he'll bring you back to where you were before. Amen? Amen. What's this here? Number one, I want to give you these seven things. Seven is the number of perfection. All right? Number one thing we look at the text here. Family history doesn't override God's power to change you. When you look at that first verse there, early in the text there, it says, blind Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. The scripture had to specifically mention the father because the father was no doubt blind. And so they had to make the connection there in the text that he's only in this position because of his father. Many of us in this room right now are struggling in areas, and it's not our fault. It's generational curses that haven't been broken off of us just yet. But you got to make up in your mind that the buck's going to stop with you. Divorce and sickness and poverty and, you know, suicide. You don't have to carry something that has, has lived in your family for years just because it's lived in your family for years. You can be the one to say, I'm not going to put up with this any longer. My children and my children's children will not carry this negative spirit. The buck stops with me. If you believe that, say amen. Amen. Family history does not override God's power to change. So though he was blind and perhaps knew that his family had the same issue, he still was determined to cry out and get his miracle. Number two, insight from a blind man. Watch this here. Never let your frustration cancel your faith. Never let your frustrations cancel your faith your faith. Some of us as believers, we get so frustrated and we get so mad that we forget about God. Don't get so mad about your life and so mad about your trouble and so mad about your situation that you decide to say, I'm going to fix this thing myself. That's the biggest mistake that a lot of us make as believers. We end up thinking that we are the Holy Ghost because we have the Holy Ghost. 
We end up thinking that we are God and we can change it because God lives in us. And God says, "Uh uh-uh, I don't need you to be me. I need you to trust me. Don't let go of your faith. I love the song, He's Able. It says, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. Blind Bartimaeus was frustrated, but his frustrations did not override his faith. Don't get so mad that you flip out and end up missing your blessing because you try to fix it. Take your hands off of God's stuff. God has a plan to fix and change your life. Don't you try to do it because you get so mad about it and you're so frustrated and you're just going to do whatever you need to do. Watch this here. You will miss the miracle. Stay in the faith. Tell your neighbor right now, say, stay in the faith. Number three, number three. Listen to this here. Blind Bartimaeus is so powerful because we, we hear that he's blind. We know him as blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus. When you hear Bartimaeus, you always think of blind Bartimaeus. But then if you look in this story, it says, when he heard that Jesus was coming. When he what? When blind Bartimaeus did what? When he heard that Jesus was coming, he then cried out. He what? Cried out. And then when Jesus told him to come, the Bible says he ran to Jesus. He what? So if the man was blind, yes, we understand that he was blind. But then we also find out that he could hear because he heard that Jesus was coming. Number two, we know that he could walk because when Jesus called him forth, he ran to go to Jesus. They said when he heard he was coming, he began to cry out, which means we know that he could talk. And then watch this here. Most important, he was able to recognize and identify because he said, Jesus, the son of David, which means he knew who he was and he was able to identify him and call him by his specific name. He was able to even go into his family history. So the man wasn't dumb. He was, he was extremely intelligent. He knew his stuff. Are you following me? So point number four is, point number three here, understand, the wrong in your life never outweighs what's right in your life. He had one issue. He couldn't see. But he can hear, he can talk, he can run, he can understand, he could communicate. And listen to this here. Oftentimes in our lives, we focus on what's wrong with us and we take too much time trying to fix what's wrong with us instead of recognizing all of the things that are right with us, knowing that if we, if we put to work what's right with us, that will position us to fix what's wrong with us. Because if Bartimaeus could not hear, he would have never heard that Jesus was coming. If he could not speak, he would have never been able to cry out and call on Jesus for help. If he could not walk, he would have never been able to run and make his way to Jesus. And all of the things that were right with him is what he used to get in position to fix what was wrong with him. The wrong with you never outweighs what's right. There are more things that are beautiful about you than things that are ugly about your life. Somebody say amen. Amen. We make a mistake oftentimes. They say, some people say, and some life coaches, oh, we got to focus on your weaknesses. Let's get your weaknesses together. And you'll spend 10 years trying to fix a weakness instead of focusing on your strengths and growing into where your weaknesses won't even matter after a while because that's just something you say, hey, that's just something I can't do, Whatever. Are you hearing me, somebody? What's wrong with you will never outweigh what's right with you. Number four, listen to this here. In the story, they start shouting. Now, everybody around this man can see. Everybody around the man can see. They were just fine. But here it is a man who was blind, and he wanted to get his sight. He wanted to get his sight. Listen to this here. He wanted to see. But then it's weird how the Bible tells us that the people around him, when he began to cry out for help, they wanted him to shut up. They wanted him to be quiet. Now, that is so disgusting that it'd be a group of people, they got what they need, and then there's one person that needs a little help, and they don't want them to grow. Some of y'all got people in your life like that right now. They got it all together, and they doing their thing, and when it's time for you to have your come up, they are nowhere to be found to support you, to lift you, to speak into your life. They'll find any way to try to block you, because some folks, watch this, just like them, they want to be the only ones that got it going on. Don't look at nobody. They want to be the only ones that got it going on. Here it is. These people could have said, oh, man, we all can see. We want you to see, too. But instead, they would have rather him stay in his position. Let me tell you this right here. And I want you to get this in point number five. All right. Point number four. Never water down your faith to make faithless people comfortable. Well, 
Never water down your faith to make faithless people comfortable. He could have shut up. They weren't comfortable with his faith. He was too loud. They weren't comfortable with his faith. He was, he was making too much noise. It was out of the norm. They weren't comfortable with it. And had he decided to say, well, if they want me to hush, if they want me to be quiet, I'm just going to sit still. I'm going to give up. I'm going to walk away. Uh -uh. I'm going to stop believing. He would have never gotten his sight. And I'm telling somebody in this room right now, you've got to have a so what attitude when it comes to people around you that don't believe like you believe, that aren't trusting God like you trust God. Stop watering down your greatness trying to make insecure people comfortable around you. They may not understand why you do what you do, but it's not for them to understand why you do what you do. You've got a miracle that you're believing for, and you've got a mentality that says, whatever it takes, even if I look like a fool, so what? Even if it don't make sense to you, so what? I'm going to keep on shouting. I'm going to keep on pressing. I'm going to keep on giving. I'm going to keep on working because I'm not going to water down my faith because you don't have none. I've got something that I'm believing for, and I'm going to get it because I trust God if you believe it shout amen somebody amen. tell your neighbor say don't water down your faith you got to have a shout anyway mentality shout anyway the same people that don't understand your praise they will see you later and then be like wow that's what it took I'm reminded of Psalm 126 where the Bible says, and the heathen will even say, the Lord has done great things for them. People will see you and say, the Lord has done great things for you. We didn't know that you could do that because of your history, but the Lord has done great things for you. We know your criminal background and we've seen your mugshot on Google, but the Lord has done great things for you. We didn't think that you'd ever be happy again after that divorce, but the Lord has done great things for you. They fired you on the job for no reason, but now here you are working a job, making three times the salary that you used to have, and they looking to have you to hire them. The Lord has done great things for them. Don't water down your faith to satisfy faithless people. Number five. When you look at this story here, Jesus called Bartimaeus to come forth. He said, come. And then the Bible says immediately, blind Bartimaeus stood up and he threw away his coat. And he ran to Jesus. The contemporary English version says, he ran to Jesus. And this is a quite obvious post that, that there are things that we must let go of before God can finish the work in us. There are things, there are people, there are thoughts, there are habits there are ideas. Come on, somebody. Let's just keep it real. There are people, friendships, relationships. You know, I, I realized in my life, God didn't start blessing me until I told some people, hey, our season is up. And listen, there are three types of people. Let me show you this here. Three types of people in your life. There are people that are going to be in your life from the time that you meet them until the day Jesus comes back. Great people. We thank God for them, right? And then the second type of person that's in your life are people that are going to be in your life for a season. They're going to come into your life at a moment, but they're not supposed to be connected to you forever. Now, the third type are the people that come into your life and they ain't supposed to be in your life at all. They just somehow tricked you and got connected with you and you're trying to figure out how, who is this? How in the world did I get them up out of here? They just was never supposed to be in your life. And unfortunately, there are a lot of folks that marry that person, but that's a whole nother conference. It's a whole nother conference. Now, see, the seasonal people, they're not bad people. They only become bad to you when they overstay their season. That's why it gets real weird and uncomfortable. Like, you ever, you ever got those people and you're like, man, we used to hang out all the time. And now when I see them, it's kind of weird. Like, it's like we're not even connected anymore. And, you know, you look on social media and, like, people that you was tight with five years ago, they ain't even your friend. They ain't a little section that says suggested friend. And you don't even want to add them. And y'all, but y'all were so tight before. Those were seasonal people. 
And this is why some of us, like Blind Bartimaeus, he got this. He understood it. But some of us don't get it that there are certain people that just because they were good in a season doesn't mean they're going to be good for you forever. And when we hold on to people for too long trying to keep them around and keep them connected, this is why conflict starts rising. Not because they're a bad person or you're a bad person, but their season is up. They had an assignment. You had an assignment. Y'all connected. And it's done. So now you got to kind of just part ways. But the reason why you can't stand Shaquita and Pookie and them is because Shaquita and Pookie and them stayed too long. It's almost like if Pastor Mike and I, we're friends, we're connected, and he's getting ready to take a vacation to Bermuda. Hey, the way he said that, I, I almost want to tell him, man, I'm going to send you and your wife over there for a few days. See, if your church really loved you, they would have started shouting, They're like, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> When's your anniversary? August 6th? Oh, my anniversary is, uh, he said tomorrow. <laughs> hey, my, my anniversary is August 18th. Huh. So your church love you. Now watch this, if, if, if he goes, now I gotta say another place because I'm gonna have to get him vacation now. If he's going to Jamaica, don't try nothing. And he's paid for his ticket to go to, where the camera at? He's paid for his own ticket to go to Montego Bay. But I'm his friend. And he wants me to go with him just because we're friends. But I have not bought a ticket. We will get to the ticket counter. And he will say, I've got my ticket. They'll say, board your flight, Mr. Kelly, have a nice trip. He'll say, well, I want my friend to come with me. Okay, well, where's his ticket? Well, he doesn't have one. He's my friend. They'll say to him, he didn't pay the price that you paid to go on this journey. But because he likes me so much... He wants me to come so bad, they will tell him, Mr. Kelly, either you get on this plane and you get to where you're trying to go and leave your friend behind, or both of y'all can stay in the airport while the plane leaves without you. How many of y'all are still stuck at the airport? Because you're trying to carry people that have not paid the price that you've paid to go where you're going. Oh boy. Some of us should have been gone to new places and new levels, but because you love him so much and you love her so much and y'all been friends since the 80s, you think that y'all got to be besties and God is saying, I can't even do certain things for you because the people you're connected with are going to destroy that thing by the time you even have time to enjoy it. I've got to separate you from where you've been for years. I've got to disconnect you from some folk that you really love. Now, that don't mean you don't have to love them, but some folks you got to say, hey, I'll see you later. And when you get yourself together, I'll pull you up. But you cannot stay stuck in 2018 in the same places just because you connected to people that you love and you know for years. You got to be like Blind Bartimaeus. Take that coat off and go and get your miracle. Get away from them folk that told you to shut up and go and run to Jesus so you can get your blessing, so that you can get your turnaround. Can you shout amen, somebody? We're holding on too long to old stuff, old pain, old memories. I've learned that the pain of my past did nothing but prepare me for the prosperity of my now and my future. Can you shout amen, somebody? And can I say this? Let me just say this. Say, say, say it, preacher, say it. There's nothing that the devil can steal from you. 
There's nothing that the devil can steal from you. The Bible says in the book of Amos chapter number 9 verse 15, everything that God has given you, it will never be taken away. And so anything that seems to have been stolen, it's not that it's been stolen. There's something that God allows to be removed out of your life in order to make space for new things and new people and new opportunities. Touch your neighbor right now and say, get ready for the new. Matter of fact, ask your neighbor, say, have you bought your ticket? Tell them, say, if not, you can't go. Make space for new things. Number six. Number six. I'm almost done. Number six. Jesus asked blind Bartimaeus. You remember in the text? He said, what is it that you want me to do for you? What is it that you want me to do for you? And blind Bartimaeus answered. He said, in the King James Version, says, Rabbi and I. In this version, he says, Master. He said, I want to see. I want to see. I want to see. Notice, he didn't say to Jesus, well, Lord, uh, you know, there's some things that I just really believe in for, and I kind of want to see just, you know, maybe if you just give me a peek at some things. No. He said, I want to see. I want to receive my sight. Here's the insight that I get from Blind Barnabas. Number six, be specific when you pray. For the rest of this year, 2018, when you get on your knees and you, or wherever you are talking to God about what it is that you're believing for, you don't have to be afraid to be specific with God. Be specific. All right, not Pacific, specific. <laughs> be specific. Everybody say, be specific. Be specific. Go sp so I can hear, make sure you're saying it right. Yeah, I got some cousins. They be like, be specific. No, that ain't how you say it. Be specific when you pray. Don't be afraid to tell God exactly what you want. Don't be afraid to let him know. I mean, tell him exactly what you need. Tell him, I mean, to the T. I remember uh, some time ago, I was, I, was, I was praying for something, and, 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 and we're getting, like, real close to it. Like, we're, like, we're right on it, man. Like, we're right on it. I was believing God for a jet, right? And we're, like, right on that thing now. But a few years back, I, I talked to a gentleman, and the same guy who's helping us, you know, do the lease now, and he said, uh, he said, he said man, I said, hey, can I get a, can somebody sew a jet into my life? I want a free plane. You know, a free one. Now, that's some crazy faith, right? Like, a free airplane for the ministry and stuff like that. Because so, we've really done a lot now. We're, like, really busy now. I said, I'm believing God for it. And he said, yeah, I can get you a free plane. And so, like, a few days later, he called me. He said, man, got one for you. I said, great. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> praise God. I had, like, a, a central triad praise. Ah! You know how y'all do up in here. You know, it, What? And then he said, yeah, he said, all you need is another $2.7 million to get new engines, landing gear, maintenance. I said, man, the devil is a liar. And I began to laugh at that because the Lord spoke to me. He said, Marcus, he said, I just want, I, I want you to know that you got to be specific when you pray. He said, I just want you to know I heard you. Yeah. He said, he said, that's what the Lord spoke to me, man. He said, Marcus, I just want you to know that I heard you. He said, now take your faith to another level. So I started saying, God, I thank you for a fully paid for plane with seats in it, landing gear working, throttle working, all the radio stacks are in position, the wings are good and strong, engines working good, flaps up, come on somebody, the windshield is nice and clear, all the lights work, a pilot that's safe, and a pilot that's a little gangster in case we got to fly around some crazy stuff. Uh, you know, I said, Lord, put it all in there, snacks, Chex Mix, Hershey's bars, you know, put everything in there, Wi-Fi, Lord, let it be so, and in Jesus' name, and my logo on the side, my picture on the wing, on the little wing tail, just so when I'm flying, I can be like that, and people be going by when I'm landing. Who is that on that plane? And I'm like, all right, so, so, uh, real specific. Now, I say that to make you laugh. I'm believing for it. We're almost there. But guess what? Whatever you're believing for, there is no shortage in heaven. You don't have to tiptoe around God when you pray because you might offend him. No, God says, believe me for what's impossible. Believe me for what they said you can't have. Go above and beyond. He said, I'm able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. So even when you do pray specific, he'll still blow your mind and do more. Boy, 
I just got excited for somebody who's been praying for a new house. Tell them how many bedrooms you want. How many garages you want. Tell them the acres that you want. Declare that thing. Somebody believe in God for their business. Tell God what kind of business you want. What kind of facility you want. You believe it for marriage? Tell them what the man looks like. Tell them what the woman looks like. I asked the Lord for what I got. And, and he gave me so much more. Are you hearing me? Be specific. You are not going to offend God. He is not offended by your big prayers. Go in. It's going down. If you believe that God will answer your prayers and even greater than what you prayed, give him a shout in advance for whatever you're believing for right now. Glory to God, specifically, my body is totally healed. If you don't want to take no medicine, say, God, heal me, and, 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 tell, and tell him, say, I want to be healed with no need for medication. Be specific. If you're praying for certain family members to be saved, don't just come up here and say, Lord, save my son. Call his name out, full name, birthday, her name, birthday, social security number, write it down, bring your pictures to church, lay hands on the pictures. Be specific with the Lord. Call out your salary, y'all. Y'all like, just so y'all don't have no, I, I thought y'all had some, some real radical faith. Like, God, I'm believing for this much. And you call out the much. And know that God will give you much more than the much you called out. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's yours. It's yours. You be specific when you pray. He said, Lord, I'm going to receive my sight. And because he was specific with Jesus, I believe that Jesus responded the way he did. You know, Jesus didn't even lay hands on him and knock him out and push him down. And that. It just said the Lord spoke. He said, man, because of your faith, you're made whole. Because of your faith, it's done. Because of your faith, your body will be healed if you're sick in this place. Because of your faith, the, 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 your, your finances will increase. Because of your faith, debt-free debts will be canceled. Be, because of your faith, your unsaved family members will come to the Lord. Because of your faith, because of your faith, what they said was so against you, God will destroy it. Every plan that the devil has against your life, God will cancel it. Because of your faith, you will be just like blind Bartimaeus. You will start out by the roadside begging, but because you've tapped into all of your other senses and because you refuse to be frustrated and cancel your faith, and because you refuse to settle and water down your faith to surprise and please people that don't have no faith. Because you got specific with the Lord and told him exactly what you want. Because you decided that anything that was burdening you, you were going to take that thing off and separate and disconnect and move forward. Because of your faith. Watch this here. He said, you've been made whole. And the Bible says, right away. Somebody say, right away. Right away. Say that, right away. Right away. Right away. Another translation says, suddenly, instantly, in the moment, the man who was once known as blind Bartimaeus was now healed Bartimaeus, seeing Bartimaeus. Can I tell you something right now? God's going to bless you to the point where people, watch this here, will identify you differently because when they see you, you will not be the same as you were before. Your name is getting ready to change. The way that some people have spoken about you in, in, the, in, in the past, they're not going to be able to speak about you that way no more. They'll see you and they'll call you who you used to be and they'll be shocked because you won't even answer because you're so far drawn away from who you used to be. He was once blind, but now he could see. His faith made him whole. Why? He couldn't see with these eyes, but he can see with these eyes. He's seen through the eyes of God, and that's what positioned him for a miracle. So number seven, and I'm wrapping up. When you receive your miracle, move with the cloud. See, I led all the way up to all the stuff that he went through and that he did to get it, but then point number seven is after the blessing. The number seven, the number of perfection. I declare right now, God is perfecting your life right now. 
Number seven, after he received his sight, he moved with Jesus. The Bible says he didn't say he got his sight and then he went on back to doing what he was doing. He went on back to the road. No, he didn't go back to the roadside begging. He didn't go back and pick up the coat. He didn't go back and surround himself with the people that told him to shut up. He didn't go back to his frustrations, but when he got his blessing, he did this. He stuck with Jesus. The Bible says, and then he followed Jesus on the road. A lot of times we get blessed and then we end up going back because we don't stick with the miracle worker. How often do you see people that come to church and they need a miracle and they come and they get it and when they get it, you don't see them no more. I've seen it so much. They'll be in church a whole year believing for a job. God will bless them with a six-figure salary and they'll come one time and testify and then after that they don't come no more and then you don't see them again until whoever gave them that six-figure salary fire them. And now they're back believing God again. Get your blessing this year and stick with Jesus. Stick with him. Follow him on the road. Don't get blessed and then, watch this here, be promoted beyond the anointing. Some folk get blessed and then they, in their spirit, now they're better than church. Follow Jesus on the road. Most important thing about this blessing, I'm sure, I'm sure that along the way, Bartimaeus testified. Somebody probably would say, hey man, you following that guy, Jesus? Now, this ain't in the scripture, but I'm just imagining in my mind as he's following Jesus. Somebody had to say, hey, who's this Jesus man? Because the word was spreading and, and Bartimaeus was no doubt in the crowd. And somebody said, hey man, hey, how do you know Jesus? And, and Bartimaeus said, man, let me tell you a story. <laughs> I was blind, but now I see. <laughs> I was, I was sitting in a place and I was discarded by people and pushed to the side and they told me to shut up when I was bleeding for a miracle, but I shouted when he was coming. He did, yeah. And when he heard me shouting, he told me to come here. He did, yeah. And I got up and ran to him. But you couldn't see. Yeah, but you know, my faith gave me the ability to see where I was going. And Jesus spoke to me, asked me what I wanted. And I told him, I said, Lord, I want to see. And he told me, he said, because of my faith, I was made whole. And I don't know what happened, dude, but just all of a sudden, I got my sight. And now I'm following him to make sure that you can get yours too. That's the attitude you've got to have. Rabbi, that I may receive my sight. When he gives it to you, don't let go of your connection to him. Stay in worship. Stay in praise. Keep giving and keep sowing. Stay faithful. This is where your miracle lives, in the house of God, in the presence of God. His Shekinah glory is what got you the miracle, and his Shekinah glory is what's going to help you to keep it. Seven insights from a blind man. Take this word today home with you today. It's in your spirit now, right? It's in your heart now, right? Apply it to your life, and I tell you this, by the end of this year, Every area of your life that's broken, God's going to fix it. Let's stand together. Your family history will not override your faith and God's power to change. Never let your frustration cancel your faith. The wrong in your life never outweighs what's right in your life. Never water down your faith to make faithless people comfortable. Make space for new things, new people, new opportunities. Be specific when you pray. And when you receive your miracle, move with the cloud. There's an old song they were saying. It said, there's a cloud of glory moving. Move with the cloud. Move with the cloud. What are we trying to say here? Stay connected to the blessing. Stay in position for your miracle. The Bible says in Psalm 1 verse 3, it says, He shall be planted like a tree, planted by the rivers of water, who bringeth forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he does shall prosper. Stay in position, my friends. Something good is about to happen for you.
Matter of fact, matter of fact, I, I think about Bartimaeus. He, he began to run. He took steps. I talked in the first service about Peter taking a step to walk on water and go to Jesus. And then here again, we have blind Bartimaeus who took steps to get his miracle. Now, I've done this all over the country and it's blessed people. The Lord gave me this some time ago, but he told me this and I'm going to close like this. I want everybody to hold one finger up. Only if you receive the word today. If you weren't blessed by the word, please don't participate in this. I don't want you to mess this up. Hold one finger up. Just one. All the way up high. Hold it up high. We're talking about steps today. Now, now, this is what I want you to do next. I want you to find somebody who looks blessed and look them in the eye. Now, be careful when you do this because I was real specific. Find somebody who looks blessed. So if you looked at somebody and then you moved to somebody else, that's going to be a little offensive. So, yeah, like, you know, I'm trying to... I'm trying to get you blessed here. I want you to make this declaration. You know, you look at somebody, look blessed, and you was like, oh, no, let me see. You know, that just really, so we're going to fix that in just a moment. I love that there. I love what y'all are doing. Hold that finger up. Make eye contact with somebody who looks blessed. Go ahead. We'll fix it. Don't worry about it, because I know you probably didn't mean it. You're like, uh, nah. Uh. Hold that one finger up. Now look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Shout it at him. Say, oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Say, I'm holding this finger up. Just to let you know that you are one step away from your breakthrough. Now, if you believe that, shout about it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold the other arm up. Hold the other arm up. Work those biceps out. Somebody else like, ooh, okay. Hold that other arm up. Now, look at the person that you accidentally looked at the first time and looked away for whatever reason. Or just simply find somebody else. Find somebody else. Can we gonna do this one more time? Look at them and just say, hey! I'm holding this one finger just to let you know that you too are just one step away from a major blessing. Now shout about it right there. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. One step away. Come on, one step away. Come on, say, say, I'm one step away. Come on, sing it. I'm one step away. Come on, one step. One step away. Come on, one step. One step away. All right, now, wait, wait, wait. One step away. Last time. This time, this is what I want you to do. And I'm, I'm leaving you. I'm going because I got a wife and I don't want her to have this baby while I'm up here in Winston-Salem. <laughs> Hold that finger up one more time. Now, find somebody way across the sanctuary. Just lock eyes with somebody. Matter of fact, matter of fact, let's do this. Everybody turn and look at that camera. We still on Facebook Live? All right? Everybody point at the camera. In five, four, three, two, one. Listen, my friends, I'm here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina right now, and you're watching me on Facebook, watching me on social media, and I'm here with a group of people that are blessed beyond measure. Now, we are holding our one finger up in the sky. We're holding this one finger up just to let you know that you are one step away from a major miracle. Don't stop praising. Don't stop expecting. Don't stop believing. Something marvelous, something amazing is getting ready to happen for you. You may feel like you're one step away from giving up, but me and Central Triad Church are here to let you know that you're just one step away from a major breakthrough. And we're shouting for you right now. Come on. Come on. Son, I'm one step away. I'm one step away. I'm one step away. I'm one step away. Come on, hold it. One step away. Come on, let me see you. I'm one step away. I'm one step away. I'm one step away. Come on, if you believe it, shout glory. Can I pray for you before I go? Can I do that? I want to pray for you. Did y'all receive that word? You're one step away. 
just 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 one move just one move that's one business decision away from wealth and may, maybe just one prayer away from healing one praise away from your breakthrough just one step away blind Bartimaeus got that thing one step he just said it I just want to see and he received a miracle I want to pray for you right now and just believe that just for this week just let's just start this week that this week will be your week of some good news can I pray for you right now come on lift your hands up father thank you right now for these your precious people I praise you right now for CTC pastor Michael and father all these precious people oh God that have gathered in this house of worship believing you for the best and God I, I know I know God that your hand is on their lives and I know God that nobody in this room is perfect but God I know that everybody in this room is believing you for something and so father I connect my faith with theirs this morning and I pray that this week will be their week for a change their week for a shift whatever they've been praying for and believing you for I ask you oh God that the same way that you healed blind Bartimaeus would be the same way that you would heal every broken situation in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I thank you right now God that this word has fallen on good ground it's been a seed planted in their spirit and God I declare that the rest of this week we will not sit by the roadside waiting and begging but Father God, we will stand, we will run to you, and we will receive all that you have for us. We speak it and we declare that it's done, whatever it may be, healing, family issues, job crisis, financial problems, God, spiritual issues, self-confidence, anxiety, whatever it may be. God, we break it in the name of Jesus, and we bind the enemy now, and we declare we are free, we are healed, and we are delivered, we are victorious, and Jesus mighty name we pray and everybody said amen. Amen. amen 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 God bless you thank you so much for listening to me today and we'll see you next time God bless you guys hallelujah amen.